Today's video has proudly been sponsored by myself and my web shop, tsmc.shop. This shop was started a little over two years ago. We built the website ourselves, and when I say we, I mean my wife. I didn't do anything because I'm simply incapable. Now, this web shop was not perfect, but it was a great start. Thankfully to a very, very, very generous and kind subscriber, he offered to build a new website for us, which would be a lot better for the customers. And that website has been launched last week. If there are any problems with the website whatsoever, please do let us know. But in the meantime, feel free to check it out. We've added some new items from Vallejo, uh, restocked some items from Aoshima, Fujimi, Tamiya, and all other brands as well. And we are currently still working on adding a lot more. So if you're interested in purchasing some items from our shop, supporting the channel and supporting me, that would be very much appreciated. So please do check it out at thescalemodelingchannel.com or for short, tsmc.shop. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. A little while ago, I made a video project about building a small underground garage diorama style thing. And for that, I used the Creality Laser Falcon 2. A couple months after that video was released, Creality upgraded the Falcon 2 to a pro version. This includes a couple of key upgrades, which makes it a lot easier to use and also take up a little bit less space. The extraction fan is now built in with a hood also covering the entire machine, top, bottom, sides, etc. And also having a nice drawer underneath, which just makes it a lot easier to use and again takes up a little bit less space and makes the machine a bit more uh, user friendly and not having to buy all the accessories separately but a lot, having a lot of these safety features now included as standard on the machine which in general just makes it a lot better in my opinion. Now overall the laser itself is pretty much the same. I uh, chose to go for the 40 watt version which is the same laser as on the two that I used previously uh, but then the Outside has changed with the hood and the extraction fan now included and also the drawer underneath making it a pretty fully enclosed machine. So I could have decided with this machine to go for a part two on the TSMC Street series which uh, will come eventually, not sure when. But instead I decided to do some much needed shop upgrades. I've wanted to do a lot of these for a very long time and I decided to no longer postpone it and just get to it. So next to my main workbench area, which is pretty much already dialed in with all of the hobby zone modules, I have my spray booth set up and I have some drawers underneath it filled to the brim with paints. Now these are just put in there, probably put in there a bit too heavily as the drawers are sagging a little bit. And I also don't really like that the uh, glass bottles are just clinging against each other. And I just like to have it a lot neater. So what I decided to do was make some sort of grid system where all the bottles fit into each hole perfectly. And if I take out one of the bottles, I simply just can place it back exactly where I put it out of or took it out of uh, a couple of seconds before using it without the whole drawer just messing everything up once you close it a little bit too hard. Now initially I decided to use some leftover MDF that I had. Uh, just to try it out and see if the laser could cut through it. And with the initial design uh, done in Lightburn, just simply cutting some holes and making a square that fits into the drawer perfectly and has the bottles fit into holes, uh, that was pretty easily done and didn't really require much skill, just basic knowledge of the Lightburn software, which is kind of easy to use for the basics. Now I could take you through the design process in Lightburn, but as it wasn't really that big of a design or anything to be called a design at all, and I'm not really an expert on Lightburn, I don't really think that I'm the guy that needs to show you how to use it, as there are many other videos online that know a lot more about this and go into a bit better detail than I would even be capable of. So instead, I'm just gonna show you the laser design that I made being cut out by the laser itself. So first of all, it just starts out with the cutting procedure, going through all of the holes for the bottles to go into, and then the outer perimeter of the uh, pretty much the, the base plate, so to speak, or the, uh, uh, yeah, the, just the base plate. And then I decided to mark some holes on there as well, which aren't holes, but circles 
for some of the feet that I wanted to glue on these just to rise it up from the bottom of the drawer a little bit and uh, just get a bit of a higher grip on the bottles so that it do not move around as much. As you can see the tolerances are pretty tight and the plugs fit in here really really well and just need a little bit of fiddling or just take out the entire tray for all of them to fall out. Now the bottles fit in there nice and tightly. Some of the bottles are a little bit bigger, some are a little bit smaller, so I just went with a size in between that is a little bit oversized, so all of the bottles fit in there nicely, and I don't have to mess around with some bottles fitting only in certain spots. Now with this design now completed and finished for two drawers, I came to the conclusion that they were spaced uh, out too far, and it took out too much space in the drawers and I wanted to do a redesign. Now overall this was a nice project to get familiarized with the machine and just to get started back up and then just rethinking the entire process, reorganizing it all and just having them fit a bit closer together. Now for this second time around I decided not to go with MDF as that is a more expensive material and a lot of these bottles will no longer be used by the brands that I'm buying from as they've changed bottles since and therefore, once a bottle is finished, I'm not going to be putting it back with one in a similar size. So instead of using the MDF, I decided to cut open the box that the laser came in and just use the cardboard and the foam instead. Now, this will be a throwaway piece eventually, but for now, this will do as I have quite a lot of these paints and I don't think I will be using any of them up very soon as there's a lot of paint left in all of the bottles. So for the first couple of drawers, the designs were redone, and then for uh, more drawers, I decided to do some other designs. And yes, I'm still calling them designs, even though they're far from a design, they're just some holes in some square cardboard. Now nonetheless, I do really like this method, as there is a bit of dead space at the back of the drawer that can't be used, as the drawer can't be pulled out fully, so I just filled that in with a blank piece. I can always throw some stuff back there, which doesn't need to stay in place as good as the paints do, for my preferences, that is, uh, instead of just not using the space at all. So in the first couple, I don't really have any stuff to do in there. I do still have some drawers filled up with trash and some old paints, uh, that I haven't done it for yet, but those will probably get the same treatment further down the line and some drawers will just be left as is. Now I did also do some for some uh, Vallejo stuff and again this is some of the dead space filled in with some other stuff that didn't fit standing up or didn't require a special hole or pattern to be made. I also have one for some spray cans that I will probably be using in a couple of future videos for some simpler projects if you'd like to see that do let me know down in the comments below. But with that being said, that's pretty much it for the shop upgrades at this time, maybe some more in the future. Now it's time to move on to the actual shop, the TSMC shop warehouse, where I also would like to have some improvements So first done. of all, it was time to tackle some stuff with the number five paints that I have in stock. I have them put into some of the boxes that they come in, pretty tightly and neatly stacked, but there's two boxes behind each other, and that just makes it a lot harder for the second box to be reached, so I need to find something uh, out for that as well, and also to fill up some dead space behind the splash paints selection. Now this was one of the very first laser projects that I did. I'm still really happy with the way that it was done, as it is really nice and neatly organized, but there is just a lot of dead space behind uh, the first four bottles, and that simply just needs to be fixed otherwise. Another laser project that I'd done later down the line was for street blisters. That was to fill up the entire shelf from left to right, front to back, and make most use of the space. Now that was done with some cardboard that got a little bit flimsy, and I wanted to upgrade that. But for that to start off, uh, that was left for now, as those still work, and I figured the number five needed to work the most, so I started with that, just cutting out some MDF, making it nice and strong, uh, interlocking it, gluing it together, and also using some staples so that it stays together and has a nice rigid box. So one of these new boxes fills it from uh, front to back, and that replaces one of the cardboard boxes entirely, just lit, making a lot better use of the space. Now this can also be done uh, for some other stuff that has smaller packaging, just making it easier to sort it out. 
uh, but that will be done in the future. For now, I just did a test 3D printed part, which also works nicely. And like I said, currently on the street blister section, it is done with cardboard boxes and some uh, duct tape, but that is falling apart a little bit here and there, so those will eventually also be replaced with some MDF parts. Now outside of the paints and some of these smaller items in the warehouse, which will require some more design work and reorganizing, specifically uh, the paints like uh, Zero Paint, Street Blisters, uh, some of the Tamiya bottles, etc. All of the kits are in place and where they need to be, so that is fine and can be left alone. But I also want to create something for uh, some of the panel line accent colors, some of the glue bottles, and stuff like that. I have some pre-made racks, but those are very specific sizes and not all of the products fit in there nice and neatly. And also, again, a lot of dead space is uh, left to be dead behind it. And it just takes up a lot of space and doesn't really make good use of the space that is available. Same goes for some of the Tamiya paints that I have in stock. Those could use some reorganizing as well, just to make it easier to get to them and also to lose a bit more of those dead spaces. Uh, these are just some foam cutouts that I got from the number five paints. They come in a nice box uh, with some of these foam cutouts to make the transport a lot safer. But again, a lot of space is in between them and that is just simply not using the space that I have optimally. I did try to do some 3D printed boxes, but those take way too long to print. Although the concept is really good and it works, just using a laser cutter and cutting some boxes out uh, is a lot easier and faster. So that is something that I will be doing in the future as well. As you can already see, there's about seven bottles of paint in the foam inserts. And with the 3D printed boxes, that is eight. So that takes up a lot less space and uses it a lot better. So with that in mind for some future projects, let's move on to another project that I wanted to tackle for an upcoming model convention that I will be going to. This one is coming up very soon next weekend in Belgium. So if you want to come check out the shop and just chat with us, we will be there on On The Road in Belgium uh, in Jabbeke. So I hope to see you guys there. If you want to place any pre-orders, the web shop is open for that at the moment. Now, one of the things that is already really hard in some of these conventions is buying space, buying table space or renting table space for the convention. And with a lot of these tiny items, you just simply need to spread them out. Otherwise, they will not be seen and probably not be sold or easily found by the customers. And I wanted to create a small solution uh, which my wife came up and that is a sort of carousel with some pegboards. So I made a small design in Lightburn. Again, I'm calling it a design, but it's not really, so let's not over exaggerate. I, I drew up some squares in specific sizes that fit into the machine and made best use of all of the MDF that fit into the laser cutting size and that fit onto some of these pegboards. So for the base, I will be using a Lazy Susan, which can just uh, be glued or screwed to the bottom piece and have it turn around nicely so you can use ac or get access to all four sides and uh, make best use of the space. The bottom one was a full plate with uh, a top plate on top of it that fits onto these pegboards. And then the top one is the same design, the same squares, put together uh, with the centerpiece missing. So on the sides, I can put all the projects on some products on some of these pegs and just uh, organize it a lot neater and use less space. And then from the top, all of the stuff that is uh, overstock and not needing to be sold or seen at the moment can just be put in there. I could also design a small box that fits in on top of that, which makes even more use of the space. So that is one of the projects that I really enjoyed doing most. And I love prototyping and building these things for the web shop just to make it a lot easier uh, on myself and also sp save some space. So if you're interested in doing some of this stuff yourself, do check out these lasers as they are great for these kinds of projects without having a full wood or metal shop being set up, taking a lot of tools and space. Uh, instead, it's just a one-stop shop pretty much in a smaller size machine. Now I'm not going to be giving you guys a safety lecture 
there are a lot of things to take in consideration. Some materials can be cut, other materials cannot be cut, some materials are hazardous, and some materials are specifically designed for these machines, but end up still being hazardous. So make sure that there is quality ventilation outside, enough fresh air coming in, and of course the extraction system running at full power all the time just to get all of the fumes out and filtered away from you. If you want to know more about laser safety, there are many videos on YouTube, all forums, etc. So go to check those out as well before you decide to purchase any of these machines and take all of it into consideration because your health is very important and this stuff can be really bad for you. So in the meantime, while I ranted away, you had a closer look at the machine itself, some of the auto functions or the fully on functions. You can have it on auto, which uh, starts and stops when the laser engraving starts and stops, or you can just have it full on all the time. I would advise it for the fan just to have it on all the time, specifically when you start a job and end it, because the uh, auto version just stops it a little prematurely and does not always suck out all of the fans, uh, all of the fans, all of the fumes and I'd just like to have it turned on a little bit longer. Now I have the extraction fan always turned on and same goes for the light as I just like to see what is inside of the machine and once I'm done using the machine I will turn it fully off, unplug it and uh, therefore can leave it safely and then it doesn't really matter if the light goes on and off automatically as I just manually turn it off but that is all up to your preferences. If you are interested in one of these machines, I will leave a link in the description down below. Do check those out uh, and find out some more information if this is useful for you and which version you'd like. I have the 40 watt version as that simply is the highest output available currently and you can set it at any power you'd like. You could also go for a little bit less expensive 20 watt version, but then take into consideration that some materials need to be uh, slowlier and uh, the power needs to be set up higher etc in order to cut or engrave through it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little project for my web shop and also my workshop and if you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos do let me know in the uh, comment section down below.